always know this stuff. How do you get tipped off? I never know where we are. Huh? News, the deuce, the ocho. Eh, the you know how I actually know? I don't know. It's, it's written in the prompter. Oh, I read. is it? Okay, that'll do I it. I actually didn't know. That'll do they it. They didn't tell me until now because I would have refused to do the show if I found out we were on <laughs> Zoom. would. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, Marquis Noel goes big, Tennessee goes down, and Jay Wright goes five good minutes with us. But we begin today with the NCAA tournament and last night's glamour game, a two-seed UCLA against a three-seed Gonzaga. Gonzaga won the game on a long three with seven seconds left by Julian Strother. Wilbon, you have picked Gonzaga to win this tournament, and you have heaped praise on their senior center, Drew Timmy, who had 36 points and 13 rebounds last night. So what do you make of the game, the shot, and the outcome? Tony was all just amazing. It, just amazing. I mean, there's the circumstances of the game, the two stars in the game, uh, Yaquez and, of course, Drew Timmy, who misses the two free throws. But when they put up their 64% and he's going to the line, I'm thinking he's going to miss one of these. I wouldn't think he's going to miss two. And I'm glad his career didn't end on that note at Gonzaga. He's been too great a player. He was too great in that game. I mean, it's not often you can say, this guy, yeah, him, he's going to be the star. And he is the star. And Yaquez, I'm thinking of, of Mick Cronin in live time. You got to rest this kid. He played 39 or 40 minutes. You got to double Timmy. But you can't because you're missing two of your five best players. You're missing two of your three best defensive players, probably. You have no depth. It's not your fault. You got to roll with what you've got. And I thought UCLA played. I, I admire what UCLA did and what Yaquez did. And Drew Timmy, I, he still does more stuff than he doesn't do, which is observed all the time. It just, I couldn't get enough of that game. If that game had gone two, three overtimes, I would have been thrilled. Well, I would have been thrilled if that game was on at 8 o'clock at night instead well, of I 2 in the morning. You, yeah. um, right. So, so what I read about this morning, and this, I was very surprised at this. What I read about was that that play, Mark Few, the coach at Gonzaga, said that that last play for the three was something Villanova had used at the buzzer to beat North Carolina for the national championship in 2016. And I thought to myself, okay, that's at the buzzer. This is with seven seconds to go. Mike, I was surprised that he pulled up for a three, not only with time left, but from distance. It was so far out. I just sort of assumed, like I think millions of people would have assumed you were going to work it into Timmy yeah. at some point. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I don't want to be critical right. because it, it, it won the game, but I'm surprised at that. And, and the wild swings in the game, if I'm not mistaken, Gonzaga was down 13 at the half yeah. and then up 10 with 2.30 to you play. You think they're going to walk you know, away with it? Tony, yes. the shot, let's go to the shot just for a second here before we move on. That is the influence of Steph Curry. And at times, you know, all these arguments about who's the GOAT and who's the greatest player, who's the face of, I get tired of most of it. But sometimes people will say Steph Curry's had as much influence on the NBA and basketball worldwide, that's just the NBA basketball, as, as LeBron James. And you want to say, well, wait, wait a minute, hold on. But he has. Because you can't be LeBron James. You can't do what LeBron James can do 99% of you. You can't. You can't even attempt it. You can only dream it. Steph Curry is the reason people shoot from the logo. And yes, Dame Lillard and other people now. But it's Steph Curry that these kids pull up and they think they're going to make it. Because they make it. Because they make it in practice. They make it in the tunnel. From okay. the, It's like a McDonald's commercial with Bird and Jordan from 35 surprised. years ago. I'm just telling I'm you, shocked I was surprised it. with seven seconds Me to go too. and from that distance. Steph Curry yeah, did this. Um, he did. His impact on the tournament is undeniable. Gonzaga, UCLA was the last game of the night. But the first one may have been even more compelling. Kansas State topped Michigan State in overtime behind 20 points and 19 assists, most of them amazing, from point guard Marquise Noel. Tony your thoughts on Mr. Noel? Yeah, so, look, I mean, Noel, to me, is the star of the tournament, at least in games that don't begin at 10 o'clock Eastern. He's the star of the tournament. Um, he, he's a wizard with the ball. But let, let's be honest here. Why are we watching him? Because he's five foot eight. He's surrounded by giants. He's got the ball in his hand, and he's 5'8". And that's why we not only watch him, 
We root for him. Yes. In the middle of the first half, I called our producer, Matt Keller, and I left this voicemail. I said, it's just like Jay Billis said, that when Noel goes up in the air, he wants to pass the ball, so don't let him pass the ball. Make him shoot the ball. And Michigan State didn't get the memo because they were letting him pass the ball time and time and time again. It's um, he's, he's just great to watch. I love that game, Mike. My only disappointment in that game was that Michigan State could not even get the shot, get the shot off, off at the end of yeah. overtime because if they threw it in and they went to a second overtime, I would have been thrilled. It was yeah, a that great game. That game could have gone multiple overtimes. So let me talk about Noel some more because you can't talk about him enough. I was thinking in real time, and I, I wrote down a couple of names, of the all-time great point guard performances in the tournament. And there's a short list for me, Magic, Butch, Lee, who might have had his in a loss, Isaiah Thomas, Mateen Cleves. There's more, but, but the list is short. And, Tony, the passes are sometimes wondrous. But, you know, yeah. I, I, I live with a five foot seven inch point guard. I do. And, 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 and time after time, my son points out, Dad, we're the same height, but, of course, he weighs 40 more pounds. And it's 40 pounds of rock because he's thick, all right? And whoever took offense at him being called a little kid, stop. Shut up. Look at him. He's five foot seven. He's a little kid and he's a wonder because his heart is big and his brain is big and his processing is big. And he can do all of that in real time against trees he's compared to. It's great to watch this. 19 assists in an NCAA game. Are you serious? In a 40-minute game. In a 40-minute game and it's a tournament game. I'll just take a, a second here to read some of these numbers. And they're just, you know, they're just numbers. He's averaging 21 points, 14 assists, and four steals in the tournament. He's got 11 turnovers. So he's got 42 assists to 11 turnovers. I mean, he's been, he has been the breakout star in this particular tournament. And as I told you the other day, I think Kansas State and Texas are teams that are, they're possible winning teams. We move on. Let's talk about the other two games from last night and the tale of two four seeds, Tennessee and UConn. Tennessee got beat by Florida Atlantic, a nine seed that nobody has ever heard of, and I believe I had this. FAU dominated the second half, 40 to 28. UConn dominated their whole game. They were ahead of Arkansas by 15 points midway through the first half. Well, on which outcome was the bigger deal? I, I, I'm not going to choose outcomes. They're both big deal because they both advanced. Otherwise, somebody's at the crib. Um, I was surprised at Arkansas being dominated based on what we had seen before. You made a very good observation. I credited you, not to you, but in some text chain I was on last night. Certainly not to me. Where you talked about, you know, beating Duke. Can you get up for another thing like that in a short period of time? These are kids. They're not pros yet. They're, They're kids. They have emotions that go up and down based on all kinds of stuff that goes on in their lives as students. So that, that kind of got to be, it surprised me. They're going to call it the bigger outcome because it's not bigger. Neither one is bigger. They're both big, the same, they're, they're equal. But to, to, to handle Arkansas like that with what I thought Arkansas was from the last couple of times I saw them, that surprised me more. Yeah, I'm going to sit here and take a lot of credit because I did pick Florida Atlantic to win on, for two reasons. One, because the Duke win for Tennessee was a signature win, and they've never heard of Florida Atlantic. I don't know how psychologically you prepare for a team that you don't even care about one way or the other. And Florida Atlantic had won 33 games, the most in the country, and now it's, now it's 34. But I'm also not going to sit here and be stupid because, to me, the bigger outcome is UConn. They rolled Arkansas. Rolled them. They have Crushed rolled them. everybody in this tournament, Mike. They have won by 24, by 15, and by 23 in the NCAA tournament. I thought Arkansas was pretty good. I think I have underrated UConn as I have underrated the Big East, which as we sit here still has three teams left in this thing. There was a period of time when UConn lost, I think, six of eight conference games. They had been ranked as high as two in the country, and then they sort of fell out. But I learned this today. They're 15-0 and in non-conference games. They've won every one of them by double digits, and one of them was Alabama. So maybe, Mike, Maybe yeah, UConn is the team that walks Maybe in they here. Are. That's pretty good. People have right? picked them. There's they some people who picked good. them. I didn't. You didn't. But We have four more Sweet 16 games tonight, which makes it a perfect time to bring in a man who has won two of these tournaments. Longtime Villanova coach, now CBS sports analyst, Philadelphia's own Mr. Jay Wright. Let me start with this, because you probably saw this. 
Gonzaga coach Mark Few said of the winning basket last night, the three that Julian Strother hit, you used that play to beat North Carolina at the buzzer in 2016. Well, when you're watching that game one, did you recognize it as your play? And when you heard that, what was your reaction? <laughs> How are you guys? Great to be with you. Um, I actually didn't recognize it right away. Ernie or Seth said something because on our play, there was a lot of other action going on. And I can't take credit for that. I have to give it to Ryan, to Ryan Archie Diacono because that was the last option in our play, the last option. We never got to it in practice. Those two just did it on their own in that game. So it was the last option, but I got to be honest, we never got to it in practice. In live time, when he shoots it from where he shoots it, were you screaming, oh, no, or what was, what was going through your head? Yeah, I, I was thinking, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> he had, because the way Mark had it set up, he, they had more time. When we run the play, we run that play between four and seven seconds. So we have a play that we run between one and four, between four and eight, and between eight and 12. So that was our play between four and seven. So you really don't have a shot. Once you hand off, you don't have a chance to drive it. But they had 12 seconds. So Mark set it up to hand it off and have a choice to drive it, which I thought he had an opening, or shoot it from the logo. That was never part of the plan for us. <laughs> All right, we'll expand this a little bit and talk about the field. 12 teams left. Jay, you've seen a lot of all of them now. Which is the team you would least like to take on if you were in this tournament and an opposing coach? I would say two of them right now. And what's amazing is they played each other in the regular season. I would say Alabama and Connecticut right now, the way they're playing. They're the two I would not like to face. And I would say that they're the two that no matter how good we were, we would have to adjust and change our style of play against them. Any other team, when you're at this point in the tournament, you do what you do. But those two are so good right now, and they're, they're so deep, I think you'd have to adjust a little bit, slow down your game, and try to grind it out with them. Since Tom Izzo is out, um, whatever coach wins this thing is going to be winning it for the first time. You won two of these. You've been through the whole range of everything that's tournament related. What would be your advice to these coaches who are trying to do this for the first time? You know, that, that's really interesting. It, it gives me a chance to talk about, you know, this tournament is, is so exhilarating. Everybody gets so excited about the wins, but... You look at like a guy like Tom Izzo or you look at Matt Painter, it's so humbling and crushing also. And I would tell each coach, don't evaluate your program based on what you do in the NSA tournament. The outside world, the media, us, the fans, they're going to evaluate you on that. But if you're good enough like Izzo or Painter to get your team, or right now, you know, Princeton, Connecticut, Xavier, if you're good enough to get to this point, your program's in great shape. So to win it, do what you do unless you get to a point down the road where you think some team, and I, I'm looking at Alabama, Alabama or Connecticut, is so talented that it's worth adjusting what you do to try to win that game. Do what you do unless you come up against those two. And then live with your destiny. Don't don't evaluate yourself. You've had a great season to get there. Don't feel you're a failure if you lose in a 16 or 18 or a 16 or 8 or you don't win at the Final Four. You're not a failure. It was a great season. But your fans might call you a failure. <laughs> we'll get you out of here on this, okay? You're really good at TV. I mean, yeah, Will Bond really, and I talked about this last really week. Really good. We watched you and said, he's really good. But I got to ask, does any part of you Want to coach again, maybe. I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, Tony. I, the more I'm doing this and I watch the, the Matt Painters, the, the Tom Izzo's, like the crushingness. And when I do games for CBS, 
and I'm at the game, I get a little juice at the national anthem and the place is going crazy, then I see a couple bad calls and I see the agony of the coach, I say, I'm good right here, sitting across from him and enjoying <laughs> the spectacle of college basketball. I'm good. It's good to hear. Thank you so much for Jake, being on. we appreciate Jake. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Great to be with you guys. You can catch Jay tomorrow and Sunday on TBS and CBS for the Elite Eight. Next Saturday for the Final Four, a week from Monday for the title game. Let's take one last break, but still to come, the Eagles find out whether they will be able to stick with their quarterback sneak. And Luka Doncic finds out how much his cat... 25th birthday, DeMar Hamlin. The Bills' safety became a household name on Monday night, January the 2nd, when he suffered cardiac arrest on a freak play in the first quarter against the Bengals. Hamlin was given CPR by an assistant trainer, resuscitated, and rushed to a Cincinnati hospital. Players on both teams were so shaken by what they saw that the game was stopped and the game was never rescheduled. Hamlin continued to improve, remarkably really, and some weeks later he attended a Bills game and then the Super Bowl. Hamlin, who was drafted in the sixth round in 2021 out of his hometown college, Pittsburgh, is still improving. The Bills have publicly said that Hamlin definitely has the intention to resume his playing career, Mike. I'm thrilled to see all the images of, of, of Hamlin participating and being joyous and ambulatory. I, I'm thrilled at it. I'm not sure, Tony, I'm ready to consume the very real notion that's going to present itself that he plays again. I, I, I'm not looking forward to that. I, if, he, if he wants to do it, God bless him. I don't know that I'm ready to consume watching that and the emotions that go with it. I hope if he wants to do it, he's healthy enough to do it. Happy anniversary, Denny Crump. On this day 43 years ago, Crum won the first of his two NCAA championships at Louisville. That was the Daryl Griffith team that beat UCLA. Six years later, Crum won again, this time over Duke. That was the Purvis Ellison, Billy Thompson, Milt Wagner team. Prior to that, as an assistant to John Wooden at UCLA, Crum had coached on three national champions. Crum, who is now 86, was head coach only at Louisville. He was there 30 years. He had a 675 and 295 record for a winning percentage of just under 70%. Last fall, Louisville opened up a $23 million residence hall named for Crum. Maybe the most under-celebrated college coach of modern times, Tony. That team, when they beat Iowa in that backcourt, two Chicago kids, Ronnie Lester, and one I grew up playing against all my life, Kenny Arnold. It was a thrill. How often do you get to see and play and grow up with kids who wind up playing for a national championship. It's something I'll never, ever, ever forget. You know everybody. No, I Happy don't. trails to the them. upcoming season for Reese Hoskins. The Phillies' first baseman tore the ACL in his left knee yesterday, backing up to field an infield chopper in a spring training game against the Tigers. Hoskins, 30, went down and had to be carted off the field. Hoskins has hit 148 home runs and driven in 405 runs in 667 games for the Phillies over six seasons. This spring, Hoskins was batting 375 with four homers and 10 RBI in 12 games. This is a comparable loss for the Phillies to what Edwin Diaz going down is for the Mets. These are two loaded teams in a division with Atlanta, and they were all spending money and all going for it. This is a step back. Yeah, Tony, it's a step back now. We often see in baseball, and I know Houston is the extreme advantage, uh, extreme example is, people coming up from spring training, young players taking the place of vets. I hope Hoskins is okay, and we don't know what Philly's going to discover in the meantime. Maybe something good. One omission, the athletic reports that Kevin Durant is progressing towards a return on Wednesday of next week. When that would be good. That would Phoenix be good. the best team in the NBA. Let's go to the big finish. Let's do it. Women's Sweet 16 started today. What you got? Miami, nine seed advance this afternoon. Tony, I am most excited about watching Caitlin Clark, as always, in Iowa go against Colorado. The tush push, that thing the Eagles mastered, not going to be banned next season. Are you surprised? I am surprised. It runs contrary to football to me. It's rugby. It's not football. Monty Williams was fined twenty thousand dollars for his officiating comments. Luka Doncic fined thirty-five large for his cash gesture. Your thoughts? Standard fare. No surprise there. No even eyebrows raised. NFL owners will vote next week as to whether to add flex scheduling for those dreadful Thursday night games. That makes sense to you? 
It does. It's the last few weeks of the season, and they say they're going to give them 15 days' notice. So that's good. Last one, Sixers and Warriors tonight. Who you got? To play, and Beat only played 12 minutes in a beat down the Bulls the other night. Golden State's going to win that game regardless, whether Embiid and Harden are there or not. Dubs need to win. We're out of time. We'll try and do better the next time. And I'm Tony Kornheiser. I'm Mike Wilbon. Have a great weekend, knuckleheads. You can get the PTI podcast on the ESPN app or Apple podcast. Matthew Wilbon, I'm not sure what you're getting for your 15th birthday. Something. Haven't figured it out. A car. No. Buy him a car. Don't listen to Uncle Buy him Tony. A Lamborghini. You're not getting a car. Matthew, hold out for a car. Your sports center. This.